From the west to the east, Kenya remains a land of diversity with a rich cultural tradition that is admired the world over. But when the clock hits election time, the country opens an ugly chapter that shocks the world every time. The raw side of tribalism that, without hesitation, resorts to violence and murder, all to protect the supposed interest of the tribe. And the controversy surrounding the 2017 lengthy electoral cycle may have pushed the country deeper into the ethnic cesspit. It's terrible. It's never been worse than this. We have never witnessed before a situation where a whole group of ethnic communities boycott an election and another group of uh, ethnic communities go to an election and uh, some communities are feeling like uh, other communities have elected a president. They feel like uh, that uh, president who is going to be inaugurated is the president of certain communities. I think the ethnic sense of belonging has never been worse than this. It is a, a problem that we can call congenital. This country was born with this uh, challenge of uh, ethnicity and management of uh, ethnic diversity at the core of the challenges, but we have failed to address it. In full realization. As President Uhuru Kenyatta took the oath of office to begin his second term, he must have been acutely aware that he was taking the reins over power at a time of great division in the country, or was he? I will devote my time and energy to build bridges, to unite and bring prosperity to all Kenyans. The speech came on the back on a highly divisive election cycle. So polarizing and so vicious had the standoff between Jubilee Party and NASA that in no less than 25 constituencies, the repeat poll of October 26 just could not take off. A deeply concerned the Jubilee has now militarized elections. It was the clearest manifestation that more than 50 years after independence, the dragon of tribal hatred was far from slain. Unfortunately, our politics has been structured around balkanizing tribes for political gain. And the people have not yet been able to translate that into what it actually means for them. So when we look at um, the state of the nation right now, we have a very fractured country where we are so polarized against each other on the basis of tribe because there are those who have been made to feel that as a certain tribe, you have a God-given entitlement to power. And that is how it's been structured. Some of the vernacular stations have perpetrated this uh, position. And so you have those, when you begin to um, front those, that kind of messaging, you already are creating a narrative for exclusion. Both the church and the independent commission tasked with the responsibility concur that as things stand now, Kenya might have sunk to her lowest. This understanding that somehow we are very ethnicized society, uh, we're very tribal, and yet actually from a researcher's point of view, you realize that many Kenyans actually know that tribalism is not right. They know the repercussions of uh, negative ethnicity, as it were. 
they know the importance of interdependence and they also know that really is very difficult to live as a divided ethnic uh, society or community. We have sunk the lowest, even though ethnicity in this country is actually an elite affair. It does not involve the ordinary Kenyan. The ordinary Kenyan lives with harmony with any other Kenyan. Until the elite, every five years, circle, come and place them in their tribal compartments. There is a school of thought that believes the genesis of this self-made crisis could be a result of deep-seated ethnic animosity, suspicion, and never-ending political tension between two tribes in Kenya, the Kikuyu and the Luo. We ask them what comes to their minds when the perceived rival community is mentioned. Mkikuyu ni mtu ni kabila ya mtu ambayo tunangangana tuna nao kwa kiti. Yao hiyo ni kabila ya mtu ambaye tu wana, tunajaribu ku tunapigana nao kwa vita ya kuchukua kiongozi. Hivyo ndivyo mimi huelewa jina ya Mkikuyu. Ili kiona mjaribu tu unasikia vizuri. Sifakuwa tu ni Raila anawa anawapeleka vibaya. Wajaribu ni watu kama tu sisi. Mkikuyu pia ni binadamu kama mimi. Ndiyo, wana struggle the way we are struggling. Although president ni mkikuyu, but ni kama venye Raila ni mjaluhu. To me, Raila kwa ni distance, ala sija ikanyaga. Se mkikuyu mwenyako i town, sidhani kama ni relative ya, wote ni relative uuru. Kwa mimi kiviangu kama inimesha soma, kidoga unifanyako kazi, ata si watu ngine tuna lose jobs, kwa sababu hii siyasa. Tumejarifu unafanya mabiashara, lakina tuwezi make, kwa sababu ya ukabila. Ningependa tu kiviangu misa hizi, tungependana. Tutanjenga Kenya na hili tuendele bila kuangalia kabila, kabila hii au kabila ile. Na hawa watu tukisema njaluo, yonekane kama hiyo jina itakwisha ili mkikuyu wakienda kisumu na hea haituwa mkenya. These people Kenyatta and Jaramogi were good friends because Jaramogi fought tooth and nail to release Kenyatta from detention. And some other kikuyu leaders who, who did not want Kenyatta to come out from detention. Some claimed their people has been destroyed by Kenyatta. And Jaramogi insisted that Kenyatta is our leader and Kenyatta is, is our God. I can remember that. <coughs> Jaramogi said so. Some Kikuyu's leaders. <clears throat> we can name them, we know them. Even Nyaga, the late Jeremiah, <clears throat> even Keanu, and many others. <clears throat> the one who stayed with Jeremogi was Misegi to Kaingiri. Who said Kenyatta must come out. And at long last, Kenyatta came out. A random survey from a cross-section of Kenyans confirms the fears on how entrenched negative ethnicity is. Nifuatiria uhuru Kenyatta na chubiri yake. Wakitembe nji singine kama ngome sa NASA. For example, ni kisi. Nifuatiria sana. Mara sote sida meenda pare. Isaita waambie nyinyi muko na watu wa vitenda wiri, ama muko na hawa jamaa, walikaa kwa serikali minyaka minya moja, na wajafanya kitu, sisi tuko na nyinyi, kwa sabi na watafanya kasi na nyinyi pamo, pamoja. Lakini ya kienda ngome ya kaya moranga ama whatever, live different where. Utasikia meronchi, this project, ameronchi hii, ameronchi. Kwa hivu hata kwa Kenya, usaisi wa mefika wa kisema, lasima tupate wetu. Chida yetu kubwa ni Kenya tukona ukabila. Ya. Yeah. And slowly and systematically by virtue of association, other ethnic communities have also joined the bandwagon in spreading the vice. It is now fashionable to openly champion community interests, even in the most unlikely places. 
This lady, Mama Abby from Bungoma County, when she appeared before a parliamentary select committee, as it pushed to amend what some Kenyans protested as skewed electoral laws in order to safeguard interests of one side of the political divide. She was unapologetic in her remarks. Wakati ni muluya na shanga na waluya wenzangu kama mungu angejua singesariwa uluya. Abaluya munataka kuwa mutu wenyu every day, every now, every night. Na kuna watu wengine wanatetea mutu yao ata akiwa uji. La sima wa mufundike nguo, hakuna mutu mungina alimuwana uji. Chabukati kaa kwa hiyo kitu na matako yote. Uta sikutingishe. Kuna katiba hile inaandika watu. Kuna katiba hile inafuta watu. But as she made her presentation amid cheers from members of parliament present at the county hall who were collecting views from the public, senior members of parliament were seemingly waiting for her queue at parliament buildings. This was in mid-September 2017. We wonder, since we used the system they had wished that would be the system that would be used only, why are they sitting back again to complain? Kiloba was not the one who was transmitting. Kiloba was receiving uh, information here just like anybody else. So you cannot take a mistake uh, that uh, was caused by many other people to just complain, uh, to, to blame one person. We are saying as lawyers that we are tired of our people and not only here, other people being bundled out of office while we are watching. We are telling Raila Odinga and his NASA principles in no a certain term, you cannot have two ways. That you will come to our people to ask for votes on the 17th of October, and you can go away with profiling people of our community who are serving in independent commissions. These members of parliament are saying no, and we will take this message to our people in rallies, in the mosque, in the markets, and tell them that the enemy of the people of the north is one Raila Amolo Odinga. Mimi sina shida na wakisi, lakini niko na shida na huo uamuzi wa huyo mzee na watu yake. I must be honest with you. Because if I am not honest, then I am not a human being. Niko wa ficha na wa ficha. We condemn him and we have asked him to withdraw that petition by tomorrow. If he doesn't, then on Monday we will all be enjoined, all the KC leaders be enjoined in that, in that, in that court, court case. According to a section of professionals, campaign narratives from politicians are to blame. We need to begin to have a different narrative about the power dynamics of um, the structure of governance and what it means to Kenyans. Because government is about service delivery. It's about the administration of the state. It's not about access to opportunity for self-enrichment or you know, to have the authority to be able to direct resources towards your kin's, uh, you know, kinsfolk and tribe, tribes people, you know. And that is how it has been structured. We're talking about a small percentage of Kenyans who are really tribal and who in that sense are really portraying everyone else as being tribal. And I think that's really, really the unfortunate side. Now, the uh, other way of saying the same thing is that if you have one criminal among 1,000 people, people tend to believe that uh, th this group of 1,000 people is very criminal because of one or two people. And I think that's the risk we're facing in. We're almost losing our own faith. We're almost saying that we're irredeemable. And yet, I really don't think uh, that's very, very true. Then begs the question, when and where did the rain start beating the nation? Kungu Karumba and Bidat Kagia gravitated steadily towards Jaramogi Oginga Odinga because he's of the same philosophical orientation. And Oginga Odinga writes a book that's titled Not Yet Uhuru because this thing which we are having is not what we fought for. We did not fight for independence so that a few black people would step into the shoes 
of the white people and continue enjoying themselves and amassing wealth at the expense of the rest of the population. Whereupon the, the Kanu, Jomo Kenyatta, propaganda with the Tom Boyer regrettably as his hireling, go um, hammer and tones against Jaramogi. They say, look at this Luo man who wants to grab power from Kenyatta. Look at these stupid Kikuyu people called Bidat Kagia and Kungu Karumba who are betraying Jomo. They want to give power uh, with Amaki to a Luo man. Never mind that it was this Luo man who refused to form government when Kenyatta was in detention. Mze Odungi Randa was an aide to Kenya's first vice president, the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, and says the fallout between the two founding fathers of the nation, Jomo Kenyatta and Jaramogi, only two years after Kenya attained independence, was purely ethnic. The police officer at that time was the late Peter Kolo Chien, who later became director of a CID. Michael Arum was senior. So Jaramogi wanted. No, did you know, Jaramogi and Kenyatta agreed that Peter Kola should become police co commissioner. They agreed between themselves as senior people in the government, in their own in their government. Because Kenyatta was president, Yaramogi was vice president. And they talked and it was sealed. The following day, I can, I can say, according to Yaramogi, what he told me, there was only KBC announcing things. It is when you hear that Bernard Hinga, Bernard Hinga was appointed commissioner of police. Then Okola was dropped, or was not a care to be the commissioner. Yarumogi went straight to have a discussion with this friend. And Kenyatta told him that the house of Mumbi sat and see that Inga should be taken. Jaramogi, who is Mumbi? Who is Mumbi? And then when Jaramogi became to be suspicious about Kenyatta, when, this, when we, 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 we are discussing something important with you, and you take this one, I take this one. You turn things to be, hey, why? I think it's there when things became Nasty. More than 50 years later, and the sharp ethnic divide continues to deepen. Efforts to champion integration appear futile. I remember when uh, the late uh, Honorable Minister Michuki was still in interior. May God rest his soul in peace. <clears throat> chiefs and assistant chiefs in Nairobi were being recruited. I didn't realize there were so many. I was informed there were about 100 who had been interviewed and appointed. Now, of this 100, I gathered that um, about uh, 80 came from one particular community. Uh, I also gathered that uh, another eight came from another community. Then uh, a community was collaborating with uh, President Kibaki, the short-lived government of national un unity, if you recall. So there were 12 seats uh, that were left for the rest of Kenya. And then you start asking, is, is this really the face of Kenya? Collectively, we have lost our conscience. We are a country without conscience, to a large extent. And once a country begins to lose their conscience, then it means there's no moral authority in what we do. The consequence of that is 
everyone begins to do what he or she can do. And you look for supporters, for people who buy your idea, and then you move along with them. And that means we become very utilitarian. And the consequence of that is that we become people who uh, look for opportunities. And that's why Kenya is really an opportunity nation, <laughs> you know. And where people have reached a point of what do I get from you? What do I get by joining this group? We have facilitated it one way or another. Look at the way people who fight for good governance are vilified, you know. Um, civil society groups that work in governance, transparency and accountability are vilified, you know. Um, they are called evil society simply for pointing that out because it is felt that you are going after our person, you know. So I think we just, uh, we, we need to have a very honest conversation as the country for what standard we are going to set for ourselves as Kenyans. What is the standard that we are going to set? What is the moral standard that we are going to set? What is the leadership standard that we are going to set? Because we need to have a shared understanding and agreement of what is unacceptable. For as long as we don't have a shared agreement of what is unacceptable, then it becomes very fluid, you know? Because what's acceptable to you is unacceptable to me. And therefore, if I deem what you deem to be acceptable, unacceptable, then that brings the conflict. Because then it looks like I'm going after you simply because I don't agree with you. So, and that's what the Constitution was, is supposed to do for us. It sets a universal standard for us, you know? But we have not quite agreed on that as being our universal standard. Even at the leadership level, at the legislative level, we have not agreed as Kenyans because we see people who do not meet the standard of Chapter 6 still operating in positions of leadership where while lacking integrity so that it makes nonsense of leadership and integrity because leadership is supposed to carry with it integrity. Politicization of ethnicity instead of celebrating the rich diversity appears to be the elephant in the room. The formations we have have taken a very uh, uh, opportunistic uh, grouping. Unfortunately, the uniting is a uniting factor becomes the tribe that sees you, look, our opportunities are better safeguarded here. That's very dangerous. That's not what ethnicity is about. Ethnicity is about the common good, solidarity, oneness, participation in decision making. The politicians went about, they grabbed the responsibility for NBC. They took it among themselves to mobilize the voters. Then they went ahead of that mobilization by mobilizing ethnically where they come from. Now, I expect the people to object to that, to say that, look, you can't choose the voters. The voters must be allowed to choose you. Because what they were doing, they were choosing voters. When you go to your so-called stronghold, and they ask them, please register so you can elect me, you are choosing voters in advance. You are not allowing voters to, to choose your program, to choose Serayako. You are not giving them that chance. You are saying, by virtue of you coming from my area, where I come from, please register. So you have already assumed that those people will vote for you. So that enhances negative ethnicity because it's the profiles me. It says, by where I come from, I automatically vote for you. I may not vote for you because it depends which program you are bringing to me. So this is how voter, the, the mobilization, the mobilization has really impacted on the country. What we need to do is to have an arrangement where those who are in power, in political power, exercising political power, realize that uh, they are dealing with a very vexed question, such that when we say that we are building the nation, when we talk about the notion of nation building, which Tom Boyer was wrestling with in 1963-64. We are talking about bringing together people from different ethnic diversities who are already different ethnic nations and trying to get them to prioritize their Kenyanness, their Kenyanhood over their ethnicity. As a country, we have failed to live up to expectations as people, as human beings, as people in one territory. 
as people can have one political system that accommodates everyone. I say, I bring in the notion of God because in our constitution, actually we recognize that we are God-fearing nation. Most of us are people in this country who worship in one form or another. And so to reach a point where we are so politically ethnicized, where we actually realize this person is not from our group, so there is the us versus them, it's unfortunate. Has Kenya failed to manage her ethnic diversity? The world is not broken yet. The National Commission on Integration and Cohesion, NCIC, says it has even conducted a research on trust levels among communities in the country. Our findings were that in by and lunch, Kenyans trust one another. But the more educated you are, the less you trust people from another community. Why the negative ethnicity is an elite affair is because the elite are not looking for leadership positions to serve. They are looking for leadership positions to access proceeds of corruption, which other ordinary Kenyans are not looking for. That's why other ordinary Kenyans are quite okay with every other Kenyan. So this is the issue. Now, to solve that, you need to attack it in several directions. First, you need to attack corruption. You need to be sure that when a Kenyan seeks public office, that Kenyan seeks to serve. And there are no other benefits that can accrue to that Kenyan other than the benefit the Kenyan is entitled to by virtue of that office. If we can accomplish that, we will reduce negative ethnicity by 90%. And I think we should not underestimate the challenges coming through from ethnicity. We have to realize that uh, this electoral process or uh, el election campaigns have kind of, uh, as a consequence, perhaps of uh, strong competition, has kind of uh, evoked uh, a certain negative solidarity among these people in terms of uh, uh, ethnic grouping. And I think it's good we face it. Uh, there's no point of living in denial. We need to face it and say, this is not good for the country. After all, what do I gain by just blocking a person on whose territory I live, who lives with me? Because we have only one country called Kenya. We don't have another country. Independence was about trying to bring these 42 or so different nations together and making them live together as one nation. And we failed that state, that test, because the state which Mze Jomo Kenyatta uh, did establish was a hegemonistic state. A hegemonistic state is a state in which a certain segment of the population tries to dominate everybody else economically, socially, and politically. And now that was what Jomo Kenyatta did try to put in place and it was emulated, it has been emulated by all the subsequent regimes. With 42, now 43 ethnic groups, Tanzania has 121, which makes Kenya a third of the ethnic groups that Tanzania has. What is it that they are doing different that Kenya perhaps needs to learn? When we come back, after the break.